Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Advisor with Stacey Chalevi. Today, I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today on our show. His name is Ahmad, and he is an investor, and he also has a true passion when it comes to mental health. He has a lot of knowledge in that area, and today he'd like to talk about investing and mental health and the collaboration between the two of them, and he has some great advice, so I want you to put your ears on and listen because he's going to take you with a, through a, a whole whirlwind of advice that might even change your life life. So Ahmad, you know, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. I'm really excited to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank you, Stacey. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, and I'm very excited to, to tackle this subject because I feel it's one that's unheard of enough. Like it should be talked about it more. Mm -hmm. um, I am an entrepreneur turned investor. I am a serial entrepreneur. I've, I've always seen the world in that light. I am half Ecuadorian, half Persian. So I come from a, let's say, a diverse background. And uh, being the son of an immigrant, you see everything is like entrepreneurship is the only way forward. Right. Um, and even though I was, I felt prepared uh, for to tackle, it, it was a hundred times harder. And mentally, it's a hundred times harder. And there's a lot of things that, I believe no business school is talking about it, or at least it's not talked about it enough. So I'm very happy to be here and uh, discuss this with you. I love it. You know, I think it, you know, when it comes to investing or being an entrepreneur, there is so much stress that goes along with it. You know, it's really a full time job. You know, even when people come home, they're consistently thinking about their business or their investments and they're constantly, you know, on the go. And it's very hard for entrepreneurs and investors just to hang up the hat when they come home and just forget about their business and forget about what they do for a living. And a lot of people, you know, like we had mentioned earlier in the conversation before we turned the camera on, you know, a lot of people, you know, they have a lot of stress because it's 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 a very intense uh, job. You don't really see the behind the scenes. We all see the success stories and, you know, this person became a millionaire. This person, you know, became a billionaire. Oh, this person, you know, their business went through the roof. But then they don't realize what goes behind the scenes, all the work that went into it, all the all the, you know, the sweat that went into it. And a lot of people, they go through a lot of failures before they actually hit a success, you know, and it's and a lot of it can take a real damper on your health, you know, stress, you know, causes illness and, you know, and stress could also affect our mental health. And, you know, I'd like to hear more about your idea about mental health and being an entrepreneur and, you know, what your concerns are and how you'd like to address them. Yes. Uh, so I, I want to start by saying that our society also puts so much pressure on who we are and it's defined by what we do. And when you're an entrepreneur, you are defined by the same. You're just defined by what you do. But if that does well, you feel well, but when it does poorly, you feel poorly. Yeah. If a banker is a banker and the bank goes bankrupt, they don't feel like a failure as much as an entrepreneur does because it's as if they're, they're symbiotic or they, they, they're the same thing right. uh, so I went through uh, I've, I've, I've had successes in life but I've also had failures mm -hmm. and when I had failures I remember um, in one case it was a it was a very uh, negative time in my life I had this startup which was my passion startup I call it that because now my startups are all brain startups I don't I don't think so much with the heart I think more with the brain mm -hmm. and this this uh, heart startup, this passion startup wasn't doing well. I gained 40 pounds. I wasn't sleeping. I felt anxiety that my whole time, I felt extremely isolated. I had no days off. Um, there was there was a relentless pursuit of making this work because I had high expectations for myself, like everybody should have. But at the mm -hmm. same time, I felt that if this failed, I was going to be a failure as well. So um, I came, this was a, like I said, a terrible, terrible time in my life. It could be the sunniest day. And I felt like there was a storm over me the whole time. And, and it was like one thing 
like like I, I even started playing a little bit the role of a victim of like what else could happen and then something else would happen that would be worse and worse and worse and um i found a book uh, which is the man's search of meaning by victor frankl it's an incredible book um i recommend everybody to read it because it it helps you in your life but as an entrepreneur it helped me understand that what's external to you can doesn't have to torture you or that yeah. you can you can you can be your own like you don't be, have to be defined by what's external to you right and, uh so then when i when that that made me a big click in my life and i and i and i wanted to like attack this on 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 the podcast and say that too many people consider their their startups a baby. Yeah. And people are like, not only is it my definition, but it's also my baby. So mm -hmm. it defines me, but it's my baby at the same time. So that extreme emotion caused me to be uh, so blindsided, so overwhelmed that my whole identity and my feelings and my life was devoted to this. And but it didn't have to be. So the minute that I started developing the separation from my baby, and instead of seeing it as a baby, I started seeing it as a machine. And I right. started to see, and I could be incredibly passionate about a machine, but I didn't love it anymore. Yeah, It wasn't like blind love. It was more like, how do I make this more efficient? How do I make this more uh, work? What right. What is this really? Is it junk? If it's junk, throw it away. Is it? Yeah. It'll be valuable to somebody else. And then, things started to work, things started to progress. And ever since I've noticed my mental health and my approach to mental health has been to, to have that layer of separation, to work a little bit more uh, independently uh, of my startup and uh, not, not, not letting it define me. I think that's a, a great analogy to have, because I think just like you said, a lot of people get too attached to their business. It's a business, you know, and because especially when people go into a business and they've started it from scratch or it's a, it's been a true passion of theirs that they or a dream they've always had. And now they're creating it. They get very emotionally attached, but then they're so attached to it emotionally that they forget the business aspect. And then they lack in that area. And that's when problems can occur also. And that's when mistakes can be made because with no matter what you're doing, even if you're helping people or, or you're still have to treat it as a, as a business. And, you know, what have you seen, you know, when it comes to mental health, you know, from others, um, you know, that have struggled, you know, have you seen a lot of people go through a lot of stress and anxiety? Have you seen it, it affect their health? You know, and, and what are some of your solutions or answers to that or advice? For sure. Um, I think mental preparation, being optimally prepared for the tackle every single day is incredibly important. I've seen uh, friends crumble. I've seen uh, entrepreneurs go through extreme tough times with their families. It affects their personality. It affects their, their families. It affects everybody around them. So, and it's sort of the, they start to bottle up everything and then and exploding into the, into everything that's around them. Yeah. So I, I, I think the solution is uh, having a support system, talking to people. There are entrepreneurships or entrepreneurs don't have to be isolated. They mm -hmm. need people. And I think the the faster we destigmatize the the fact that you need to talk about your problems, uh, the faster you will you will feel better. And as an entrepreneur, you kind of feel like no one understands my situation, no one knows what I'm going through. Right. But I I'm here to tell you you're wrong. I. I speak to entrepreneurs every day. I am I am an entrepreneur. I'm part of a community of entrepreneurs. I'm always around entrepreneurs. And it's incredible how similar we all are. And we yeah. all think the same thing. We we all think our nemesis is we're not understood. We don't nobody not, no one's gonna understand that because my uh, my company is very unique. No, it can be unique, but what you're going through is a human emotion and we need community. We need support systems, we need to talk about them. 
And then more importantly, we need to stop being the victim. And that takes practice. That takes training. Uh, yeah. That takes empowerment. And that takes mental uh, mental work. Right. It's very true. And, and it, you know, that's one of the biggest things I see is people play the victim. You know, they, 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 they blame the society, they blame what's around them. They blame, you know, everybody, but, you know, and went, poor me, poor me, poor me, but you have to just look at the situation and then not, not so much look at yourself as a victim, but it, it's a learning experience, you know, in any business, we're going to have our ups and downs. We're going to have, we, but instead of looking at it in a negative way, think of it, maybe like pulling something positive out of that negative thing that happened, you know, did it make you wiser? Did it maybe made you learn about a certain area of the business that you weren't aware of? Maybe like you were blinded to now you have the experience and now you can move forward with new knowledge. You know, there, there's lots of ways to go about it, but I do like that fact that you, you know, that you stress about getting support that we, you know, even though businesses might be quote unquote unique in their own way, they're all going through the same emotions and and the same the same situations you know, and you know uh, that support group is i think is really necessary like you mentioned yes yes and i also like what you just mentioned about using a negative to a positive i even think mental health has a a a, a stigma to the negative but it could be to the positive Yes. Uh, entrepreneurship can be like a great source of fulfillment. It could be a great source of being creative. It, it can be liberating. It could be, it makes you more resilient and extremely empowering. So if you, if you think, okay, I have a very tough day, um, but I can choose what to, what to do with this. It's, it, it's incredibly empowering. It's a, and for someone that's like, a problem solver it's the ultimate puzzle it's like the ultimate fulfillment so yeah. switching up the mindset i think from that victim to to hero mindset of saying have a problem bring it bring it to me i love it i i i this is why i got in the business because i i i i love this right you know i i think you're so right you know it, it you know, you, you do, it's great to be creative and do something you love, you know, but, you know, and, and to be able to, to, you know, do something that you always wished on doing. But when you, when people are going through those struggles and they're going through those hardships, you know, so, so many people that even though they have a, a business, they might have many customers, it might be thriving, but then yet the money is not coming in the way it should be, or there might be interferences or obstacles along the way. You know, what are some suggestions for, for that you'd like to share with others on how to cope with, you know, these obstacles and, and, and the hardships that come along with being an entrepreneurship? Uh, I'm going to quote my dad on this one. Okay. He's an entrepreneur as well. And he used to tell me that when you have a business problem, it's this small. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you have a business problem and you, you sometimes it seems like overwhelming and huge and, and it's over you and it's overwhelming. Try to shorten it with your mind and be like, no, it's actually this small. Business problems right. have business solutions. Yes. So health problems have very difficult solutions sometimes but yeah. business problems have business solutions so don't see them as such so don't maximize the problem minimize it and solve yeah. it and get it done and i think that that helps as as an entrepreneur to have that that being able to frame problems smaller and bigger and also opportunities for the if you look at it the other way Sometimes we see opportunities as massive. You can also be like, wait, am I, am I making this bigger than it is? Like mm -hmm. I did my problems or is it this big or is it this? Big? So having that perception of a problem can help you solve it. And if you, if you look at it on the other side, the opportunity, not being over ambitious, not being, or, or not being ambitious enough. Sometimes right. you'd be like, oh, this is a small deal. No. This could be a big deal. Yeah. 
Very true. That is, that is so true. And I, I think it, it's really important, like, you know, to understand how to handle these emotions too. Like when you, you know, a lot of people, I think entrepreneurs, they focus on, you know, they worry about the future a lot. They worry, you know, and instead of just focusing on now, they're, they're already planning ahead. And that's just the entrepreneur mind, you know, your ideas are flowing and you're thinking about the future. But then if you worry too much about things that haven't happened yet, you, you tend to get anxious and you tend to, you know, get stressed out. You know, you might be thinking about a problem that's not yet a problem, but you're, you know, you're looking at something that's occurring now and, and thinking, well, if this happens, this could happen and this could happen. And then people start getting really anxious. So, you know, what's your, your, your input about, you know, focusing on the now and not so much, you know, focus, worrying on possible problems that haven't even occurred yet. I love, I love this problem. I love this question and I deal with it every day. So I love it. Uh, once I, I, I exited my companies or one of my companies, it allowed me to become an investor. And now my job is to help other entrepreneurs invest. Mm -hmm. And the number one question or the number one consideration is always what if, yeah. what if there's a war? What if there's a recession? What if the Fed raises rates or lowers them? What if one party wins or the other one wins? And I have to be uh, consistently talking to, to entrepreneurs and also family offices and, and high net worth individuals. The, the what if is our nature. Yeah. It's our human essence. You know, we are built to measure risk. We are risk adverse uh, animals. Right, we're 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 set on this world to be like, be careful of heights, be careful of running, don't be careful of moving objects, be careful of predators. So our this is a this is our nature speaking. So how to overcome this? And this this is what we do in our company is we 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 commonly say, risks can be tolerated, yeah. uncertainty cannot. Mm -hmm. So what does risks? can be tolerated, uncertainty cannot means that we have to uh, leave no stone unturned, look at every possible scenario, and are you comfortable with those scenarios or not? You don't invest to not be comfortable. You invest to be more comfortable. Right. And, and the second part is l l focusing on what you can control and letting go what you cannot control. So this right. I teach so too many people. I'm like, can you control what the Fed does? Can you control a war? Can you control? You cannot control. You can only control what you do today. Yes. And um, don't feel alone because you need someone like me or you need someone around you that is your the guy you trust, the persons around you. You need to surround yourself with people that you say, hey, they can see further than I can. They have a better vantage point. They have done this before. Yeah. Let's put it on, on another profession. A doctor, you're not asking what if the operation goes wrong. You trust them. You think, right. what are you going to do to me? You're going to take out my appendix. Okay, go for it. You're not asking them, what if, what if, what if? So it's the same thing in investing or the same thing in entrepreneurship or the same thing in driving. When you know what you're doing, you have the tools to make calculated decisions and not fall and not crash and not make a mistake. Right. Oh, that's very good advice. Yes. You know, I, I think I think people have to look at scenarios differently. If people look make things a little bit more practical and more simpler, you know, I think people won't get so overwhelmed. I think sometimes we look into things too much and then when we overthink things and then yeah. we you mentioned earlier those those problems that could be this small make this big you know and then it gets us really overwhelmed and overworked up now people that you you work with you know and you see a lot of them probably go through stressful times do you have suggestions when people are you know th there's a lot of things going on and they feel very stressed ways they can bring themselves down to a level of calmness so they could focus and have clarity and make wise decisions in their business yes um, I have a, I use a technique called the, the alter ego. The alter ego technique has helped me in situations that have, uh, have been uncomfortable situations. Mm -hmm. 
I think that when you can project yourself as something else, you can see things objectively. Mm -hmm. I, for instance, don't like the camera. Mm -hmm. I don't like to public speak. I feel terrified. I don't have this. And some people are like, how can you do it? And I'm like, because when I go to these podcasts or when I talk on camera, when I do a public speaking, I spoke to a thousand people recently. It was mm -hmm. a big crowd. Yeah. And before that, I, I put on a shirt and I put on a suit and I said, today I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I'm eloquent. I, you know, I'm, I, I'm sort of like a Superman putting on his, yeah. his suit. And I felt like I'm confident. I, so I got, I built up myself to be a confident public speaker. And I wasn't thinking, oh my God, I don't know what I'm going to say. What are they going to ask me? What if I trip and fall? What if I don't, I, I say something that wrong? I wasn't thinking about the what ifs. I was being the right person. Yeah. So that, that has been, that has been one of my tricks and something that I teach other people when I say, Hey, don't say, I don't know. Don't yeah. say, I don't, I've never done this. I've never seen this. Relax. Think that you know already. Right. Think. Feel that you know. Feel that you have the power. Feel that you can analyze these numbers. Feel that you can see what's going on. Feel that you can trust other people. And you'll see how the answer presents itself. And if, sometimes the answer is, we don't know. So what do we do with we don't know? There's always a way to play things. It's always like, okay, if we don't know, we act a different way. It's like, I, I say that if we don't know, it's like a blind man walking down the street. They put You put your arms in front and then you'll touch and then you won't crash. So we can operate this way too. So it's, you know, it's really calming yourself for, in order to, uh, in order to have a clearer mind and make better decisions. Yes, that, that's great advice. And, and I think a lot of times, you know, mindset is very important. You know, what we put in our head, how we project ourselves, you know, plays a big role on, on how we, how we look to others. You know, if we can, you know, put our, in our mind that we are a confident person, we, we are, you know, put that, like you said, that alter ego that put, put that, you know, uh, that, that uh, image into our head, you know, we, we tend to then draw that confidence and we present ourselves that way. And then others see us as that way, because a lot of times, you know, I think sometimes people underestimate themselves, you know, or they, they don't, they don't, um, they don't get, actually give themselves uh, as much worth as, as they are, you know, they under, they feel not as worthy and, and they don't, you know, and that could affect an entrepreneur too, when they're working with their clients too. And, and that could determine the success. Also, I think when you're investing, you have to really, you know, or you're an entrepreneur, you have to really, you know, feel confident in what you're doing and what you're saying. And people have to see you as that type of person also. Yes. And I think the other the other side is is uh, the other technique I use is change your hats, you know, mm -hmm. change the way that you see things. Yeah. If you use if you wear the hat of a like a pontificator or a, I don't know a fortune teller, yeah. you're gonna be wrong. Right. But if you wear the hat or a contrarian, everything that's this way, you say it's the other way. No, yeah. you're gonna be wrong. But if you wear the hat of a scientist, of a truth seeker, you might say, I don't know what's happening. I'm just looking for the truth. And if you say, I believe that it's this way, you make it's like a scientific method. You say, this is my hypothesis. I test it. And if I'm yeah. right, I'm going to test when it's wrong. So I don't right. have so much ego into it. It's a more humble way to see the world. And it's more like, you know, let's test things. I don't know, but let's test. And when I'm right, I want to see when I'm wrong. It's a more right. truthful way to operate and it doesn't it doesn't affect your your personality. You don't make these big claims that then are defied by everyone. And eventually when you're wrong, you're gonna feel again that mental health of oh why did I do this or my confidence is hurt or oh my god, everybody's gonna remember that I said the world is flat when it you know it, <laughs> Yeah. It's, it's just part of part of human nature but if you have that mindset you might say it's it's fine if i'm wrong just search, right. searching the truth right exactly exactly i you know it, it's 
you know, what are some of the best uh, advice that you can give people who are entrepreneurs who who want to succeed and do well? And, you know, they're they're unsure of, you know, they, they get stressed out very easily and they're unsure how they should really, you know, focus on 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 being successful. Do you have advice for people who, who want to be successful, but they haven't reached that level? They haven't elevated to that level that they really want to see themselves at. So. My best my best advice is become before you do. Mm -hmm. So to clarify that it's to become means you you need to be that person already. Let's say you want to be a millionaire or a billionaire, or whatever you want to become. Mm -hmm. You need to be the millionaire before you can become the millionaire. The being is first. So the same thing is like you want to be the CEO or do you want to be successful? You need to be successful before you become successful. You become the CEO. Before, and that is a very powerful uh, advice that I've received. And to be something, I think you need to, you need to have, you need to separate your time into threes. Yes. The third of your time needs to go into talking to people that are above you, people right. that have gone that route that can help you uh and that can can guide you that will help it's like what what do i need to what do you need to you don't don't ask the question what do i need to do to be like you you need to say what do you need to be to be like you and right. then they will say oh i i never complain not even to myself yeah i you know if if, if i need to walk 10 minutes i do 10 minutes i don't do nine just a right. silly example. The second, uh, third of your time, you need to spend it with your peers. Your mm -hmm. peers will sort of draw a competition and you will see how it, you, people evolve and how they can help you and be in a place that's collaborative but competitive. Right. And the third with people that are a little bit younger than you. They might have ideas that help you propel. Yes. If you don't separate your time like this, and sometimes it's hard to get the top third. Yeah. But there are books for that. So you can read any book and you can have anybody in your ear and your eyes and podcasting right. and learn and then apply and then also give back. And then you'll see that you become whoever you want to be, you'll become and right. you'll be ready. Because if if you're not ready, you'll get you you might get that million dollars or billion dollars, mm -hmm. and you're gonna lose it. Right, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Are there other other things that other you know that you see people um, how they get affected? mentally with having their own business and any suggestions if we talked about we talked about anger you know haven't haven't been anxiety and, and and people worrying too much and you know and i'm sure people have a lot of fear also the fear of trying new things is there you know one of the biggest things i i i see too is it, with entrepreneurs is they're afraid to take chances you know some of them you know they want to be successful entrepreneurs but they're they're afraid to 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 take chances and to invest in things that they're not sure of you know what's your suggestions on that um, i'm going to say something controversial okay and it's i think that it's okay to be a little bit crazy mm -hmm. it's a little it's okay to be unbalanced mm -hmm. uh i think everybody suggests or society says you need to have a balanced life and you need work life balance and you need to spend enough time with everything you need to socialize and you need to travel and you need to do it it's like i'm starting a business how how, how am i supposed to do all these things yeah. and when you want to try to chew every every buff every uh food in the buffet you're gonna be sick yeah so as an entrepreneur i've given this advice and i take this advice i live this advice i say no to everything i mm -hmm. don't i'm happy doing my business i love my business i love right. it Right. I'm the happiest doing it. So when someone's like, oh my God, you didn't travel for summer? It's like, <laughs> what? I'm doing, I'm busy. I'm <laughs> happy. And I'm happy doing my business. And I'm, I'm, and some people might perceive this as, oh, he has no work-life balance. Like, 
I, I can't pursue everything right. and be great at it. I cannot do everything and be good at it. I have to do certain things and I need to release others. And yes. I'm happy not to take a vacation to be able to have my own business. I'm happy to do that. Right. I'm happy to sacrifice uh, weekends because I'm happy to do it. So mm -hmm. my advice to entrepreneurs is it, it's okay to be crazy. And if you yeah. put it, uh, I, I, my, one of my favorite shows of all time is The Last Dance, Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. Michael Jordan is not an example of someone that's not crazy. He is crazy. <laughs> someone that was consumed by his craft. If you want greatness, you need to be like that. Right. And maybe not to that extreme, but you won't get anywhere close to greatness if you're not dedicated, if you're not yes. focused. Yes. So if you want to do everything, that's when the problems are going to happen. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And I like that. You know, you, you should be a little crazy at times. You know, people are so afraid to, you know, to get out of their realm. And you know what? And and it, and it's okay. You know, if, if something makes you happy, you know, do it. You know, so, you know, not everyone's meant to travel the world. Not everyone wants to travel the world. Some people are just happy doing X, Y, and Z. And yep. a you know, the person is not getting stressed out and over overwhelmed and overworked, then if it works for them, they should keep doing what, what they, they love doing. You know, it's really every individual is different and you really have to figure out what works for you as an individual. I, I think that's what people yep. have to. And, and just to compliment that is not only what works for you, but be your best self. Yes. Yes. So again, going back to the, to that advice of being, be your best self. And if my best self is, I, like you asked me also, like uh, entrepreneurs have to do things that outside their comfort zone. Well, it's not going to happen if you're trying to do a hundred things. You need to right. focus. You need to step out of the comfort zone and crush it. So that takes immense amount of power and, and dedication. And that's how you can really progress. And then, and then, that comfort zone outside that comfort zone becomes your comfort zone. Like I'm comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. Cause I'm growing. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Now, if you had to take everything we talked about today and you really wanted to emphasize on some important things, what would you like to emphasize to the listeners that you feel, you know, would really impact their lives? There's a saying that ideas are cheap, execution is everything. Mm -hmm. But I would say execution and mental health are everything. If you have a clear mind, if you have a powerful mind, you everybody has a powerful mind. You have to unleash it. Yeah. So you won't get anywhere without this mental aspect. And unfortunately, universities and courses and they can teach you accounting, they can teach you economics, they can teach you human resources, but this this mental side, it's it's less studied, it's less available. Yes. So if I can leave one thing, is that success depends 99% on your mental capacity, on your mental, so work at it every single day. Yeah. Find resources, find your friends, like I said, find mentors, find books, talk to people, because you that's, to me, the biggest uh, catalyst of success. And that's so true, because when you do go to college, you know, that's the one thing they don't teach you is how to cope with life when you get out in the big world in your in their industry that you're studying you know what do you do and and most of the time you go out there and, and people you're so young and naive when you first get out of college and then the world just hits you you know for some people they don't know how to cope with it you know they it's it's overwhelming to them you know and you know some people do a great job coping with it but it all depends on the personality but imagine if the school did take a, a few courses and and teach people how to how to deal with the, the real world well, that's why we, we live in a society where society can also help you. And if you yeah. reach out, uh, and I'm, I'm, if for people listening to this, I'm sure that hopefully they got one or two cents of this and then they can apply and it'll help them. 100%. And society can help, can help each other. So 
I find that entrepreneurs and investing is is a community. There's 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 a community that reach out, and yeah. I'm sure there's going to be someone that has gone through something similar and can help help you. So, uh, I'm I'm very happy about having talked about this subject, and and I think it's one of the most important ones. Oh, I agree. I agree with you. Now, what are some of the services that you provide? Do you provide services? Are you, are you, are you doing just invest in now? Yes. So I help, like I said, entrepreneurs access the best investments that are available. And these are usually private investments, uh, high barrier to entry investments, and I have an access to them. I provide mm -hmm. access to them. So I am their ally that they trust. I am the person that understands every aspect, the financial, the legal, what are we getting into, the business model, how to talk to people, what the tax implications. Yeah. Investing is like uh investing is a competitive sport. Right. If you have the right team, you can win big. Yes. And some most people invest by themselves. So right. like poor things, they don't they don't they don't hold the candle to to those that are working professionally with a team. So we yeah. are that team for for invest for, for entrepreneurs. And like I said, most of my time, even though I understand all this stuff, I spend 90% of my time talking about the mental side because the minute they invest, they think, oh my God, what's going to happen? Yeah. And they say, relax. Every Every risk we've analyzed, every risk has a mitigant and we've left uh very like nothing to uncertainty. Right. I like that. Now, if people wanted to get in contact with you, where can they find you? So LinkedIn is my biggest audience. Uh they can find me under my name, Amara Shrafi. I'm the founder and CEO of Infinity. Uh I have a website, infinity9.com, and also on the social media as Ahmad Ashrafi 99. I love it. I love it. This has been amazing, Ahmad. Thank you so much for coming on this show. I really enjoyed all your advice. I, I think this is a topic that, you know, a lot of investors and entrepreneurs need to understand because with, you know, with entrepreneurs, you know, a, a, there's a lot of things that they have to deal with, you know, and, you know, and mental health is one of them because, you know, people, you know, get affected in many ways when they have, they run their own business. And I think it's really important. And I think it's great that you actually come out and, and talk about this because it's, it's something that's well needed in our society. No, Stacey, thank you for having the platform, for having the podcast. Uh, what you've done is incredible and I really admire your your trajectory and how how many people you've helped but then also having me on is is a huge honor for me oh thank you and and i am so glad that you came on the show and it's it's an honor to have you here as our guest also so thank you so much for being here thank you you have a great day you too